And, and and you start your nonprofit, and is that where the prodigal son, that 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 title for the initiative, is that where it came from? The the baptism, the some of the religious information you was getting uh, while you were locked up. Yeah, from the story of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I think it's Luke chapter nine or whatever. Like, now nah, who's not the prodigal son? Yeah, I mean, cause I didn't have to be a blood. Like, I became a blood cause I definitely wasn't going to the NBA. I wasn't going to the NFL. <laughs> You ain't about to knock me down and give me a uh, CTE all day. <laughs> I'm not trying to. Uh, I wasn't going to the NFL. I wasn't busting through the line, you know, running a four four forty. That's I'm, I'm gonna be, admit to that. I might run a five two forty, but not a four four. <laughs> but um, so nah, man, I, no man, the Bible. I, I like that story. It's like I fell in love with that story, man. Um, I fall in love with dope stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you know this young dude. He his dad is still alive. He tell his dad, give me my half of the inheritance. He still got an older brother who was hating on him. But it says he left his house, riotous living, fast women. It said he ended up in the, it, it feeding the pigs. He was eating the, the pig slop. He was eating with the pigs and was just like, I wonder if I had to go to my house, if my dad would accept me. Even if he just let me feed the pigs and work for him, I'd rather go home than be in the streets. And it said that when his father seen him afar off, he ran and met him, wrapped his arms around him, put his robe on him, gave him a royal ring, some new shoes. And I, I, you know, I got all my bright, shiny J's right now. I was like, all of that, I, I equate all of those biblical and Islamic stories to today to how we live in today because we the same people man we just you know instead of wearing what they wore two thousand four thousand years ago man we just we wearing what we wearing versace or jordans or whatever but we still the same people man it's nothing new under the sun but that story really resonated with me and i was like i am the prodigal son yeah you, know? and you had some pretty quick success in your efforts oh it was it, because i felt a void right out the gate i felt a void so first i went to the halfway house I was in a halfway house for a year, but I was learning how to do a nonprofit because I didn't know how to do a nonprofit. And people don't know that, you know, you got to file with the IRS it, it, just because it's a nonprofit. It's a business. If, if you were in the red in a nonprofit, they'll shut you down. You still got to make money with your nonprofit. A business is a business. If your business is failing, it's failing. So I learned how to do a nonprofit. I filed my paperwork with the IRS. Uh, back then, you have to, it was $750 if you thought you were going to raise over 10000 or like two fifty if you didn't, if you just wanted to kind of do it part-time, but I filed, I, I paid my own $750. Um, we filed the paperwork like five months later, the IRS said you were incorporated. Shoot, me and my family, we celebrated. It was a big deal. Um, I called the prodigal son. And at that time I was working for Einstein Bagels when I first got my 501c3. And it really started taking off when I started um, my after school program in Park Hill at the at a elementary school called Hallett, which is my old elementary. A lot of the old bloods who were really from Park Hill um, went to Hallett and um, I went right back to the right back to the block to Jasmine and uh, and didn't it be it'd be domos, it'd be shootouts and everything because <laughs> they were still selling dope right across the street. And uh, we have my kids and a lot of kids who would have became bloods or just got caught up in that. I, I was letting them come after school and I was actually teaching them how to play chess because I going to prison and, and summer camp back now. I really loved playing chess. I, I mean, I used to feed myself playing chess in the penitentiary. I've won two, shout out to Mackham. I've won two chess tournaments since I've been out of prison with, playing with Mackham. But um, we were just, we started off playing chess and it just grew. Then we started going hiking and it, the kids were giving me these ideas. Kids were like, yo, let's go rock wall climbing. He used to call me Mr. Terrence. I'm like, shoot, we can, I've never been rock wall climbing. I grew up being the blood, going to prison. I was in the halfway house and I started my after school. I had never done none of these things. You know, we would do, we did, um, 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 what do you call it? Mechanics, um, auto mechanics class, cooking classes. You know, we were just doing all these different things, man. And um, it grew pretty quick. You went from like 11 kids to, to, to 60 kids all, all by yourself. And you're doing this. Yeah, it was, well, when you have something like that and there's no other after school programs, when you got a bunch of kids, because so when I started gangbanging, that was the thing is, it wasn't none cooler than seeing your homies who you grow with and the big homies, they flanked up, they wearing red, they wearing burgundy. They, you know, they got red bandanas, they smoking bud, all the cute girls. If you wasn't going to the NFL or NBA, because you're going to get caught in that middle, you you better be able to fight or gangbang. And so... um, 
um, that was my after school program. And I really wanted to, de to design Prodigal Son to be just as cool. Because I always say this when I speak, if your after school program or your church is not as cool or as tough as the Bloods or the Crips, you can't blame a 13 or 14 year old for being the blood or being a crip. They, they human, they gotta live, they gotta be protected. They're gonna get called a goofy, they're gonna get laughed. Somebody a bomb on them, anything could happen. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we started rocking the, first we started off with green and orange. Um, but then I ended up making a trip to Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And there were actually some activists in Port-au-Prince who were wearing camouflage that were given to them from some Chinese peacekeepers in the UN. And they were giving people rice and stuff and just doing what they could. And so I told my after-school program kids about my Haiti trip with me rocking the camouflage, I'm mean, with them rocking the camouflage. And they were like, we should get some, some camouflage shirts because it has the black and the brown. And I had a lot of Latino kids in my program and African-American kids at the time. And we started rocking the camo because it had the black and the brown pattern. And uh, then it just became a thing because a lot of my kids' parents and, and older siblings were bloods and crips. And so when I started giving them prodigal sun shirts, we had the gold, shiny gold logo on top of the camouflage. And, and it was like the hand of God holding up the city of Denver. Um, man, you look, I was driving down Colfax and just being in Denver and I was seeing bloods and crips wearing t-shirts that we had that I did I wasn't there when they received the shirts but it's it became a movement you know and it just became a thing it just started getting bigger than us and it worked <laughs>